Good morning, everyone. So our story this morning is one of my all-time favorite kings of Israel. So I have a few favorite kings of Israel, and this character teaches a whole lot about knowing who we are and what, what our identities are. So Ezekiah, <laughs> Ezekiah, the biblical Hebrew, Hezekiah, Yehu, or Ezekiah's, Born 741 BCE, was sole ruler in 716-15-687-86. He was the son of Ayers, and as we know that Ayers was no easy feat. And he was the 13th king of Judah, according to the Hebrew Bible. So let me tell you a little bit about his dad before, so you can understand what I'm talking about, knowing who you are and not allowing what was passed down to you and the circumstances of your life to dictate who you become. Now, Ahaz was one of the most wicked king whose apostasy led Judah astray and brought the nation to ruin. Rather than worship the God of Israel, Ahaz made images of Baal. He even sacrificed his own children to the false god, which we see was evident in his grandson who never met him. And this is how the sins of the parents can pass down to the third and fourth generation. He even sacrificed his own children to the false god, I said. And we see Manasseh, who was born 15 um, years after, 15 years after Ezekiah was sanctioned to die, passing his children through the fire in Molech. Thank God the man was saved in the end. And that's what the Bible says, when you train your children, they will not depart. I mean, they can make their own choices to leave, but they know the truth in their heart. He even sacrificed his own children to force God because of his wickedness, God allowed both Syria and Israel to successfully attack Judah. So let's come back to my guy. So you know who his father was. You knew how Ezekiah grew up, but somehow Ezekiah knew the way of the Lord. He didn't allow the behaviors of his father to dictate who he became in Jesus Christ. You see, in the biblical narrative, Ezekiah witnessed the destruction of the northern kingdom of Israel by the Neo-Assyrian Empire under Sargon in 722 BC. And we know the northern kingdom was totally annihilated and other people were brought in, except for those who were poor, the Hazarim, the, the people of the land that were poor were left behind. The best were taken with them by these kings. And the king of Judah um, during the Assyrian siege of Jerusalem by Shennacherib in 701 BCE. Ezekiah enacted a sweeping religious reform when he became king, including a strict mandate of the sole worship of Yahweh and a prohibition of venerating other deities with the first temple. He is considered a very righteous king in both the book of, of, of Kings and Second Kings and in Second Chronicles. His story is spread all over the Bible, and I'll tell you more about that. He's also one of the more prominent kings of Judah mentioned in the Bible, and is one of the kings mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. Yes, no king of Judah, among other, even his predecessors or his successors could be compared to him. And that's why Ezekiah could pray the prayer. He prayed to the Lord. Some people think he was alty in the Talmud, why he, which is why he was sick. But hey, when, when you know what God says, you give him back his word. And that's the power of being in Jesus Christ. You pray all right. And no king of Judah among either his predecessors or his successors could compare to him, according to 2 Kings 18 verse 5. Isaiah and Micah prophesied during his reign. So the name Ezekiah means Yahweh strengthens in Hebrew. Alternatively, it may be translated as Yahweh is my strength. The main biblical account of Ezekiah's reign in 2 Kings and Isaiah and 2 Chronicles, Proverbs 25 verse 1, also commences a collection of Solomon's Proverbs, which were copied by the official of King Ezekiah of Judah. His reign is also referred to in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, Hosea, Micah, and Isaiah. They were all in his time. The books of Hosea and Micah record that their prophecies were made during Ezekiah's reign. The book of Isaiah record when Ezekiah sought Israel's, Isaiah's help, when Judah was under siege by Shennacherib of the near Assyrian Empire. So based on Edwin um, Thiel's dating, Ezekiah was born around 741 BCE or 681 BCE, at, and he died about 687 BCE at the age 54. So when he was supposed to die and had no children, he was at 39. So I don't totally agree with the Talmud, so I'll come to that when I get there. Because, you know, the Bible says he 
cried to the Lord and he, you know, he agonized to the Lord because he had no issue. You know, the, 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 you know, there's a lot of methodology in Judaism. And they were saying that he was upset, Isaiah, because he didn't go, go to Isaiah and Isaiah some arguments. We'll come to that. And so he calculated his reign years, arriving a figure very close to each other. So um, however, Rob Andrew Young dates his reign from 25 to 696. So there are different dating of his reign, but one thing we do know, he was in his 50s when he died. So Ezekiah was the son of King Hares, as I said, and Abijah, or oh, his, his mother was called Abby. She was a daughter of the high priest, Zechariah. So Ezekiah married Epsibah, and he died from natural causes at around age 54, around 687 BC, as I stated. And he was succeeded by his son, Manasseh. So when Ezekiel was supposed to die at age 39, he had no children. So he said to the Lord, look, Lord, my interpretation, look, Lord, I have no here, no issue to take over this throne. I have, I've done what all the other kings haven't done. I have been, no, Ezekiel taught us how to reason with the Lord and to wrestle with the Lord. Now, some of you might say he shouldn't have because his son was no good. Well, the Bible says, come let us reason together. And thank you, Ezekiah, for showing me how to agonize and to pour myself out before the Lord. Not just when he wanted an issue, when he wanted healing from the Lord, but also when he was going to be attacked by Shanashari, king of Assyria. Ezekiel taught me how to spread my situation, how to prostrate in prayer before the Lord and how not to allow the problem to minimize the size of my God. Ezekiah taught me how to pour it all out to God and how to be honest and authentic before God. And that's why I love him so much. It wasn't perfect, but he taught us how that the God we serve can reverse his intention towards us. Not that God didn't know we were on a poor self because he's all knowing and he's God, but he teaches all that God wants to work with us in our lives. Ezekiah was the son of King Ahaz, as I said, and the daughter of um, Abi. Okay, so Ezekiah was the son of King Ahaz, and you know, he reigned over Judah. And the biblical narrative says that he assumed the throne at the age of 25 and reigned for 29 years. So we can work out when he was born. So some writers have proposed that Ezekiah served as a co-regent with his father Ahaz for about 14 years before he actually started to reign. So, you know, Ezekiah was ruling with his dad, and his dad was evil, as I said, in the sight of the Lord. His sole reign is dated by Albert Wright at 715 to 687, and we're not going to tell you 716 to 687 also. So some say 715, some say 716. So he, he died somewhere there. So he, in the last 10 years, been a co-regent with his son Manasseh. So he was also a co-regent with Manasseh. So he was drafting him and is helping him in his reign. So according to the Bible, Ezekiah purified and repaired the temple and purged it of idols and reforms the priesthood and did undo all that his dad did. In an effort to abolish idolatry from his kingdom, he destroyed the high places of Bamut, the high places of Bamut and the bronze serpent or the Neshetan, Recorded has been made by Moses, which had become objects. Can you remember when they, they were bought, bitten by a serpent? Made, Moses had made the serpent, not for them to worship as an idol. But it says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of God will be lifted up. So we see these people worshiping what was meant to be the healing for them. And it wasn't serpent who healed them, but it was a symbolism, you know, as it says, Son of Man will be lifted up. So in, 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 so he brought a lot of temple reform and he removed the idolatrous worship from the temple. So in the place of this, he centralized the worship of God in the temple in Jerusalem. And Ezekiel also defeated, so they were worshiping in a lot of groves and places. So he centralized the worship and bringing back the people to come into the church and worship. And this is where, you know, sometimes community is important because when we do our own stuff, we tend to go off on tangents that we're not supposed to. And there's no one to garner us back in. So he... Ezekiel also defeated the Philistine as far as Gaza and its territory and resumed the Passover pilgrimage and the tradition inviting the sick, the scattered tribes of Israel to take part in Passover festival. He did all of that. So in 2 Chronicles chapter 30, but not parallel to 2 and 2 Kings, I record that Ezekiel sent messages to Ephraim and Manasseh, inviting them to Jerusalem for the select celebration of the Passover. And the Manasseh we're talking about is not Joseph's son, but that's a tribe. So Ezekiah's son was also called Manasseh. Okay, all right, different. So the messages, however, were not only to listen, but were even, were even laughed at, although a few men of the tribes of Asher and Manasseh and Zebulun were humbled enough to come to the city. According to the biblical account of the Passover, which was celebrated with great solemnity and such rejoicing as I had not seen in Jerusalem in the days of Solomon. The celebration took place during the second month, Iyar, 
because not enough priests had consecrated themselves in the first month when they normally have the Passover. So the political moves, moves and Assyrian invasion was plenty in the time. So after the death of Assyrian King Sargon in 705 BC, Sargon's son, Shennacherib, became king of Assyria. And in, he saw his dad in motion. And in 703 BC, Shennacherib began a series of major campaigns to squash opposition to Assyrian rule. And they were evil. Assyrians were evil. They, they hooked you in the nose. They did all this evil stuff. So starting with the cities in the eastern part of the realms in the 701 BC, Shennacherib turned towards the cities in the western. Hezekiah then had to face the Assyrian invasion of Judah, and they would make the people pay them tribute and take everything they have. Hezekiah did not rely on Egypt for support, but relied on God and prayed for him for deliverance of his capital city, Jerusalem. So he did pay some tribute to Senator before when he was like, he just stopped, which angered Shanashari. Hezekiah, like, why, why do I have a God and paying tribute to you as a slave? So the Assyrian record that Shanashari lifted his siege of Jerusalem after Hezekiah, but he planned he planned his move carefully, and Ezekiah paid Shemeshub tribute. The Bible records that Ezekiah paid him 300 talents of silver and 30 of gold as tribute, even sending the doors of the temple in Jerusalem to produce his promised amount. But even after the payment was made, Shemeshub renewed his assault in Jerusalem. He, he was paying the tribute he asked for, and he was still attacking them, taking in the door of the temple. Shanashim surrounded the city and sent his Rabshakeh to the wall as a messenger. The Rabshakeh addressed the soldiers manning the city wall, asking them to distrust Yahweh. And Ezekiah was not disturbed by this. He claimed that Ezekiah's righteous reforms, destroying the idols and high places, were a sign of the people should not trust their God to come G, because it wasn't our God, because he doesn't like idol worship to be favored disposed. The second kings record that Ezekiah went to the temple and there he prayed to God. And I, I like this, but Ezekiah as a leader, he was setting the example because he knew in whom his confidence lie and that even though he was king, his power and kingship lied in Jesus Christ. Knowing that Jerusalem would eventually be on the siege, Ezekiah had been preparing for some time by fortifying the walls of the capital because he knew that Assyrian could not be trusted. And his confidence and trust only could be in Yahweh. And constructing a tunnel to, to bring fresh water to the city from um, a spring outside his wall, he made at least two major preparations that would help Jerusalem to resist the conquest at the Siloam Tunnel, and I had the privilege of going in that tunnel. Who, boy, did I have to, have to say some prayers? So in some part of the tunnel, you, you have to turn sideways, and only so one person can, some part had to climb up in my hand. When you get into the middle of the tunnel, in, 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 in the time tunnel, you could see where people were living in there. You could see the remaining potteries and the plates and stuff. So you could hide in there and survive away from if you're being attacked. Boy, that was some prayers to get in that tunnel. Ooh, claustrophobia. Ooh, I prayed my way through. So Shinnashur was intent on making war against Jerusalem. Therefore, Ezekiah consulted with his officers about stopping the flow of the springs outside of the city. So they stopped the flow outside the city, you know, because they know king normally something dry up the flow. So 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 they think so they the, the people have no choice because they're dying of thirst, but to give in to their demands. But Ezekiah was smarter. So consult with the officers and stop the flow of springs outside the city. Otherwise, they thought the king of Assyria would come and find water in abundance. So Ezekiah didn't want him to, to deceive him. So he wouldn't, you know, help them. So, so according to the biblical record, Shanashirab sent threatening letters warning Ezekiah that he had not desisted from his determination to take the Judean capital. Although they besieged Jerusalem, the biblical account stated that Assyrian did not so much shoot one arrow there now cast up a siege and rampart because Ezekiah prayed that God sent out an angel who in one night struck down a hundred and eighty five thousand in the camp of the Syrian because Ezekiah put his trust and knew in whom he believed sending Jeremiah back with shame of face to his own land Jeremiah's inscription make no mention of the disaster suffered by his forces but a professor, Jack Finnegan, commented that in view of the general note of boasting, which pervades in the description of the Assyrian kings, it is hardly to be ex expected that Shenashim would record such a defeat. The version of the matter of Shenashim presents as found inscribed on what is known as the Shenashim prism, preserved in the University of Chicago to this day, Oriental Institute. Its part says, as Ezekiah the Jew, he did not submit to my yoke. Ezekiah himself did send me later to Nineveh, my lord city, together with 30 talents of gold, 800 talents of silver. This version inflates the number of silver talents sent from 300 to 800. The Bible says it's 300. In other regards, it confirmed the biblical record and shows that Shanashirim made no claim that he captured Jerusalem. Over Shanashirim presents the matter of Ezekiah paying tribute 
as having come after the Assyrian threat of a siege against Jerusalem, whereas the Bible states it was paid before. Eratus mentioned the Assyrian army of Senator being overrun by nice mice when attacking Egypt. Josephus gives a quote of Bershaws that is quite close to the biblical account. So, you know, in the, in the biblical, the Hebrew gave their own um, mythological stories. Um, one of the famous Hellas of Ezekiah, when he was, you know, at 39, when he had the boil, which is an inflammation, and Isaiah told him that the Lord said he should put his house in order because he would die. But Ezekiah, Ezekiah understood like David how to petition the Lord and Ezekiah petitioned the Lord and Isaiah returned saying that the Lord had heard your prayers and he would recover. Ezekiah understand that his power and everything he has comes from the Lord and that there's anyone that can change the situation, it is God. So Ezekiah asked for a sign. So this is the only point in his life where Ezekiah asked for a sign. And I'm not going to read into that. And Isaiah asked him whether the shadow should go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees. Ezekiah said it would go back. And I can say that Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord and he brought the shadows 10 degrees backwards, which is not a light thing for the battle to go forward, but going backward was a wonder. Other people saw that and knew it was only God could have done that. Ezekiah taught us that we can trust God and we can wrestle with God. And that we can know who we're paralyzed and God is able, show down in Ayer's dial. So the narrative of his sickness was miraculous recovery is found in 2 Kings 2 in Chronicles and Isaiah. I like the book of Isaiah also to include it because it gives us a bigger picture of the story of Ezekiah. So various ambassadors, ambassadors came and of course Ezekiah showed them his house instead of sharing about, they wanted to know what happened because the sundial went back so it was a talk of the town. So Ezekiah had been sick and Ezekiah in his vain moments flattery forget to share about what God has done for him. So when God has healed you and have done stuff, do not forget to share. Do not let pride come into place. And he showed him all his stuff in his house. When Isaiah asked him, so what, what did you do? Everything. There's nothing in my house I didn't show. So he said they're going to take all of that. So according to Isaiah, Ezekiah lived another 15 years of the pain, praying to God. So his son became a successor manasseh and was born during this time. He was 12 years old when he succeeded Ezekiah. So even though Ezekiah lived 15 years, he didn't get a son until three years because Ezekiah at the time was said to not be married according to the, the Jewish Talmud. He got married to Isaiah's daughter. And according to them, that was because of his sickness because Isaiah didn't want to get married. He didn't want to have children. But I think I don't totally agree with that. But hey, don't know the full story. So we'll leave that. That's not important for a story. So the work of Ezekiah was recorded in the King of the Annal. And as I was saying to you, God is able to do immeasurable more in our lives when we recognize who God is in our lives, when we recognize that our power lies in God, we can have our identity in Christ. So even though Ezekiah was king, he wasn't one of those kings who said, oh, I'm king, I can do whatever I want. He wasn't like his father, Ahaz, who, who walk away from the things of God. Ezekiah recognized that his kingship is in, in, in the king of kings and lords of lords, and he recognized that he wouldn't have to be afraid and continue to pay tribute to these Assyrians because he was afraid of them because his power and his identity lies in Jesus Christ and in God. And because God is his identity, he could trust him to bring him deliverance. So it was not written down that the king of Assyria besieged him in his time. Heavenly Father, help us to have this confidence and know how to seek you wholeheartedly. Father, like Ezekiah, we make bad choices, but we're not defined by our, our bad choices or, or, or the behaviors of our parents. Yes, we, we struggle and we can see the traits of his dad in his, his son, Manasseh. And maybe it's why God didn't want him. And even though he made a mistake, God gave every king after him the opportunity to do what was right. And it would have been passed on and passed on and not happening. But their hearts didn't turn towards him. So whatever was predicted to Ezekiah, plus their own sicknesses and, and their own bad choices became a tyrant in their flesh. Help us, Lord, to learn these life lessons. And Lord, we lift up ourselves before you. God, lift up my placement and my shadowing before you. And I ask you, God, for grace and favor. God, you've always granted me grace and favor. And I need your grace and favor and understanding. There's so much happening and so much going on. But God, I am coming to you with no excuses because you are a God and you are all powerful. We put in those who are sick, they should have gone mother, those who are hurting and your mother family, those who are grieving. Father, we just lift them up before you, God, and we ask you to have your way. And tomorrow, whose um, son has been funeralized today, nephew has been funeralized today, we also lift up all those who are grieving and hurting, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, to be that balm and healing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day. Bless, bless, bless.